NXT UK finally has a women's champion. Let's talk about it. What's going on, everybody? It's your buddy, it's your pals, Pass Phoenix, the YWC Reality Check, here with the second half of November 28th's NXT UK Action 2018. And, yeah, we've got our first ever women's champion. And this is the last, for those of you that haven't been paying attention, this is the last review you're getting out of me this year, going on sabbatical. It's December, it happens, I'll be back in January doing more videos like this. Hopefully we'll be doing one NXT UK a week by then, as we lead into... Uh, take over Blackpool, but this uh, this episode of NXT UK was all about Tony Storm versus Rhea Ripley for the first ever NXT UK Women's Championship. Starts out with a huge highlight package from the uh, from the women's tournament, mostly focusing obviously on Ripley and Storm. Ripley beating Zaya Brookside and Dakota Kai to get her spot. Storm beating Ela Dawn, much to my chagrin, and Ginny to get her spot. And... Uh, I said it in the last video as well, because they did highlight packages on both these women. I, I say what I always say, WWE always does great video packages, let's move on. Uh, first match of the night was supposed to be Joe Coffey versus Sid Scala. Sid Scala is basically NXT UK's equivalent of James Ellsworth. Joe, to show that uh, he's uh, adequately confident, shall we say, sends his brother and Wolfgang to the back saying, you know, I'm not going to need you, da 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 this is going to be a walk in the park type thing. Sid Scala then comes out in a suit, obviously not wrestling, says he's not medically cleared, but I am here to replace, or sorry, I am here to introduce my replacement. His replacement ends up being Tyler Bate. We know that the beatdown uh, of Mustache Mountain happened at the hands of the Coffee Brothers and Wolfgang uh, a couple of shows ago. I don't know whether you want to say a couple weeks ago, because we've been doubled up in the time. The time frame just isn't there, but... Uh, Joe Coffey versus Tyler Bate, and this was this was a lot of fun, and we didn't get a winner, but, you know, it is what it is. Fist of fire from Bate to start, because he's, you know, understandably pissed off. Body shots by Coffey, body shots by Coffey some more, and some back elbows by Bate. Mark and Wolfgang return to the ringside, and there's lots of distractions and so forth. Kofi, or sorry, Kofi, because I'm talking about SmackDown all of a sudden. Coffey tosses Bate into the rail, stomping on him on the floor. Uh, spear style headbutt by Coffee once in the back of the ring in a mud hole stomp. Chops by Bale. Butterfly airplane spin by Coffee into a suplex. Straight jacket by Coffee reversed by Bait into a straight jacket of his own. Eventually, they waste a lot. I don't say what they waste, but they spend a lot of time in this straight jacket choke reverse, straight jacket choke reverse sequence. And it just re it really plays up, obviously, the power advantage of the Coffees because they're freaking huge. But. Also, the uh, underestimated power of somebody like a Tyler Bate, who is smaller, but is also unhuman in some of the things that he can do. Body shots by Bate, call, uh, corner splash by Coffee, head scissor by Bate, and a standing star press power slam by Coffee. Trent Seven arrives at ringside to stop the distractions on the outside. He's in a knee brace from the beatdown, but he still hobbles his way down to the ringside. Pump kick by Coffee, lariat by Bate, airplane spin, rolling kick by, uh, rolling kick by Bate. And just as things are looking like they're going really, really in Tyler Bates' favor, Mark Coffey, Wolfgang, they storm the ring. Three-on-one attack. Seven tries to help, but he's hobbled on his, his knee brace, etc. There's a three-on-two beat down until Pete Dunne joins in. Pete Dunne is over as fuck. They, ch they chase the... The Coffee Brothers and Wolfgang out. Coffee Brothers and Wolfgang step back up to the apron once more for a very, very brief stare down. And uh, then they back off once again, heelish fashion, etc., etc., etc. These three, or sorry, these six are, are going to go at it at some point, and it's going to be fucking fantastic. Great match for what it was. I mean, there was no ending. We're building a lot of story. There's a lot of personalities in this match. Um,. Joe Coffey is, is, is a bulldog in his own right, isn't he? I know there's a lot of big dudes. I mean, you got Tyson T-Bone, you got uh, Eddie Dennis, who we just finished talking about a while ago. Uh, you got Obviously, you got Dave Mastiff, uh, you got Wild Boar. You got a lot of these big, powerful guys, but you've still got the personalities of somebody like a Tyler Bate, and Pete Dunne is just unworldly over, and it's fucking great. And you got all these really, really talented guys in there, these five really, really talented guys, and they're really just going at it and brawling, and the crowd is already really, really into it, but it just hits another level. I'm sorry, when Pete Dunne hits the ring, he is a fucking star. We're going to talk more about that when we get to the main event, obviously, but Pete Dunne is a fucking star. And it makes me nervous, because eventually, 
Vince McMahon is going to realize that he's a star, try to poach him onto the main roster, and then, you know, we're going to get stuff like Monday Night Raw, aren't we? Legaro versus Dan Maloney. Um, uh, Legaro's awesome. Dan Maloney is another fill-in type character. Uh, the match is pretty much an expose for Legaro. Towards the end of the match, there's a slingshot slice bread number two by Legaro, which is really nice. Suicide plancha by Legaro into that crystal clear springboard, DD, springboard tornado DDT that he does. Legaro wins the match. Not really much to say. Kenny Williams versus Amir, Kenny Williams and Amir Jordan versus Zach Gibson and James Drake, who are also the grizzled young veterans. Because Zach Gibson is in this match, the crowd does the shoe thing. And I love the shoe thing. If you hate Gibson, take your shoes off. If you hate Gibson, stand up. It's really, really good. Cravat by Gibson to start, who works the wrist. Right hands by Drake. Back elbows by uh, Williams. Hip toss by Jordan. Crossbody and a headlock by Drake. Uh, Gibson slams Drake onto Jordan. They're very, very, very similar to what the um, very, very similar to what the Mighty did to Oni Lorcan and Danny Birch. Uh, on on actual proper NXT Cobra Clutch again by Gibson body shots by Jordan drop kick by Williams wheelbarrow face buster was really really nice drop kick by Jordan and Williams and tandem suicide dives double team code breaker called the ticket to ride by Gibson and Drake get the win now they refer to them on commentary as being the grizzled young veterans that's not how they're being introduced to the ring so another little bit of shit that doesn't quite match up it's like the whole uh, is it the NXT title or is or is it the NXT UK title or is it the WWE UK title it's that sort of discrepancy once again but this isn't what we're here for this match is over out comes Johnny Saint with that gorgeous women's title belt and it is time for the main event Rhea Ripley taking on Tony Storm to crown the inaugural NXT UK Women's Championship. And like I said, we've done a lot of build-up on these girls. Uh, both of them have been in both May Young Classics. Tony Storm should have won last year. Rhea Ripley should have won this year. We didn't get that. Um, Kyrie Sane won last year, which is fine. Tony Storm won this year. Rhea Ripley was a fucking monster this year. It's all good. The transformation of Tony of uh, Rhea Ripley from last year's May Young Classic to this year's May Young Classic is fucking great. And the story of this match, almost from the word go, is Tony Storm's back. She's the smaller girl. She's the skinnier girl. There's less, and I'm, and I'm saying this in a nice way. There's less meat on her, there's less protection on her, and that is an amazing story. They start it right from the get-go. Tony Storm, you know, she's in there, she's a go-getter. Series of forearms by Storm to start a boot and a hip attack. Low suicide dive by Storm hits, but then things go awry immediately. She goes for another hip attack on the outside, misses, hits the guardrail on the outside, and immediately she crumples to the ground when her hip hits that guardrail. Mudhole stomp on the outside by Ripley, high knees by Storm. They, they sort of struggle on the apron for a little bit, but a back body drop on the apron edge by Ripley just destroys Tony Storm. She does get back in the in the ring though, however. Mounting punches by Ripley, hard Irish whip into the turnbuckle. All the focus is on the back at this particular point. Corner spear by Ripley, working the midsection, forearms to the back, working the back, beal across the ring, and a body uh yeah, a body scissor submission by Ripley working on that back, working on that midsection. It's all good. So Tony Storm gets a flurry in. She turns over the body scissor submission, gets some mounted punches in and some forearms. Ripley locks in what she's been doing to all the girls since this roster debut. She's doing that standing figure four, which is really great on a couple of levels. A, it's a submission. B, the submission is enhanced by the by the victim's own body weight hanging down. C, it's a psychological thing. I am this this powerful. I can literally carry you around the ring in this lock and there's nothing you can do. It's probably one of the better submission moves that there is right now, if I'm honest. Two snap Germans by Tony Storm, followed by a headbutt and a third snap German and commentary. Nigel McGuinness on commentary on fucking form, talking about how in God's name is she pulling off those those snap Germans, especially the third one because she does try to bridge with her absolutely buggered back, which is great. Shining Wizard by Storm doesn't quite hit all of it. She does finally get the hip attack, uh, followed up by the double knees. Drop kick by Ripley, but Ripley spears the post, gives us a little bit of a hope spot. Ripley tosses Storm out of the ring fucks up her back once again and absolutely ragdolls her against the guardrail. Now imagine what 
Nia Jax does to just about anybody because she's the biggest woman WWE has, uh, where she does sort of that back and forth thing against the guardrail. Now imagine if Nia Jax actually knew what she was doing, that's Rhea Ripley. <laughs> Moving on. Back in the ring, Tony Storm goes for the Storm Zero. Her back fails. The Storm Zero obviously fails. The Riptide hits the mark. Ripley gets the win. She is your women's champion. Triple H, Johnny Saint are out there presenting her with the belt. Uh, even though she's the heel, she's having her, having her happy moment. You can see her if you if you zoom in on her face, like she's she's not on mic, but you can hear her just saying like this is unbelievable. The rest of the roster is on the top of the rampway. I will say. It's a little weird to see the whole roster out there to, you know, see this historic moment when only some of them were included in the tournament. I've I've made a big deal about the glaring omission of Killer Kelly in this tournament. Not that I thought she would have won, but she should have been in it. Nina Samuels could have been out because she hasn't really shown me anything yet. But that's another story for another day. Rhea Ripley is your champion. Uh, for those of you that have read the spoilers for TakeOver Blackpool... In, in January, you know who she's defending it against. It's gonna be fucking fantastic. I'm not gonna drop any spoilers here. This was great for two girls who are not on, were not on WWE's radar six months, a year, a year and a half ago to get us this invested. You know, we thought Tony Storm was gonna win the Mae Young Classic last year. The the amazing transformation of Rhea Ripley in the Mae Young Classic this year. Tony Storm actually winning this year. These two women sort of being the dominant pillars of a division that is just starting. This was fucking fantastic. If you haven't seen it, I, and I, I know I said this about the uh, the Devlin Pete Dunn match because that was just a, that was a great match, but you never knew you never knew that um, uh, you never had thought that Devlin had a chance of winning. Here's the thing about this. A, it was spoiled for us a long time ago. I've used the uh, the terminology a lot. NXT has some of the worst kept secrets in the history of the dirt sheets. Doesn't matter. They were incredibly behind. That's why we've been doubling up our episodes. That's fine. You've got two women that I'm very, very interested in. A match I'm very, very interested in. The one that I wanted to win didn't win but that doesn't take away my enjoyment of the match whatsoever. That is a hallmark of a great, fantastic fucking match. Go watch it if you haven't. That's it for me. That's the last review you're going to get out of me for this year, unless something absolutely amazing happens. Uh, if you've been following me only for NXT for any particular reason, I want to say thank you for a great 2018. I will be giving you one or two topical videos over the course of December, as well as a preview for TLC. Till then... I've been Spaz, your YWC reality check. Subscribe up there, talk down there, start a conversation, keep all these conversations going. Don't be a stranger. I'll talk to each and every last one of you later. But for right now, and for 2018, I'm tagging out, guys.